Hi guys, in today's video, we're going to show you how in just a few hours, you can put together a nice cocktail cabinet like this 2021 version from Holland Computers. Now they had a previous version and this one has some significant upgrades. The T-molding fits better. It comes with these clips for the top. The, there's pre-drilled holes which will save you a lot of time and also it's made of a much sturdier MDF board so should last you a lot longer. But we're really excited to show you how to put this together. Only takes a few hours and you can do this with just a few tools. Stay, pay close attention to the video coming up. Thank you. So here we are, we just received our 2021 version uh, Holland Computers Retro Arcade US Cocktail Kit. Uh, FedEx brought it and as you can see in four boxes. Uh, I will say that they're quite heavy so be careful when uh, your, hopefully your FedEx driver won't be too mad at you, but four different boxes, a couple of them are pretty heavy. So watch out for that. Now you're going to make sure that you download the manual and uh, you just download this because we're going to use that today as we put this kit together we're going to show you guys also how to do it uh, it also please note here that you don't uh, return it to the store or marketplace but call them for service or if you have any problems missing anything stuff like that that's what we're going to do we're going to open this up we're going to lay out everything make sure everything arrives safely and that we got all the parts it did say the first thing in the manual that you're going to need some tools they're pretty basic tools most of you have, but I'll show them right now. It says, first you'll need a rubber mallet hammer. It's not a regular hammer, but a rubber mallet hammer. Then a number two regular screwdriver, Phillips head like that. Also said that you may need a stubby, number two, so we got that. And then just a knife or box cutter and uh, or a blade like this. So that's all the tools it's going to take. In just a couple hours, we'll have a game ready to play. Now, right off the bat, let us start by saying that this kit does not come with a board or any kind of software of any kind. But it will easily hook up to most JAMA boards. All you'll need is a JAMA side, JAMA connector, and a PC or VGA port right here. It also will work with Raspberry Pi or a PC, but you're going to need an adapter. You can get those from Holland Computer, by the way. So all you'll need is to get that adapter, then you can hook that up, but it does not come with a software or PC or JAMA board of any type. So you're going to need to order that separately. So we've taken everything out of the box and inventoried everything, and everything was here, just like we thought it would be. Um, it did come with a small manual. You might remember that I printed a larger version for those of us that are a little uh, on the eyesight impaired. It makes it a little easier to read, but they did. it does have a manual with it. You can also go to the website and print a bigger version if you need to. A couple things that uh, before we start assembly that they made some tips on and we're also, these are the little cam locks that come with it. Uh, one thing it says to do is avoid over tightening these and the studs that are that go with it you don't want to over tighten either one so just make sure they're good and snug and we'll show that in the video once installed it says to avoid removing the t-molding uh, doing so may loosen the grip of the panel so it's actually uh, going to put the t-molding on first and then put it together uh, there are indicators on the panels where the electronics go and so it kind of will tell you where to put your board and different things like that uh, you probably will probably need a uh, three thirty seconds drill bit to do a little bit of a depth just for a little pilot hole it said so you don't want to make sure you don't want to drill all the way through your wood so you may set the depth on your drill so it doesn't do that or just be very careful and then it says a small bar type clamp can be used instead of a rubber mallet um, we prefer the rubber mallets it's fine with us um, then when installing the glass clips it says that there's a rubber piece on them that's for the plexiglass. Now, if you bought the real glass, it says you don't need that because it's thicker and those are just a little buffer for spacing anyway. But now that it's all here, I can't wait. Let's go ahead and get started putting it together. 
So here we go guys, step number one, it says to go ahead and install the T-molding on the slotted panels. Um, and if we count it right, this would be four of those. It'll be panel C, L, the top of course, E, and O2. So these four, we're going to start off by putting T-molding on them. doing is just lining up this in the groove there. this is, you can do this with one person but with two people this is a very quick fast job now before we get to this corner we do want to mention that one of the improvements that they made on this is they grooved the corners a little wider which should make for the T-molding to go in a little easier and you don't actually have, to, you're not supposed to have to cut the T-molding to get it to fall into that groove. We'll see how that works out. Oh, great. Went right in. So Jonathan is kind of ahead of me, just putting it out there. And I'm just coming around with the hammer. So we can go back over all of this in a few minutes. We're just going to kind of turn, and uh, that went right in, so that was definitely an improvement doing it that way. And then what we're going to do right when we get to the end is we'll just take our knife and cut that just as close to the edge. Again, it helps having somebody hold it for you. And uh, there we go. So nice, good T-molding all the way around. Now we'll do the other pieces. Okay, make sure that you put the T-molding on all the pieces with the groove, such as this access panel that goes on the side. Uh, one of the last things that we'll put on it has T-molding on the sides. And then around the, the control panel, around the sides and up underneath, um, all everything that has a groove make sure you put T-molding in okay so we've done the other pieces but before we do the top we just want to say this is kind of a preference at where you start uh, normally we start right in the middle because hopefully that'll be the back of the game not very many people have it out in the middle a lot of people like to start in the middle of the control panel um, this is just a preference guys so wherever you want to start uh, just pick a spot and wherever you start. I would avoid starting in a corner though uh, I would do it in the middle either here or right here and we're, we're going to choose the middle right here Of course, this is where if you didn't cut it real straight uh, Which I did pretty good, but not perfect. Uh, it's going to show <laughs> But again, this is going in really easily like I said, you might want to come back around and get some of those places a second time. But as we go around, Johnson's helping me about as fast as he can go, I can go. And let me get that spot right there. In those corners, you can just kind of hit it right there. I've got a black mark from my hammer, but we can wipe that off in a little bit. close as you can get to that corner right there each direction the only tricky parts just right there and but it, this is uh, going in way easier if you watched our other video where we used a little bit wider more traditional team molding uh, it's a good time to say that so there were a couple improvements. I think this T-molding is a lot thinner. It's made for this. It actually fits a lot better. Also, this uh, wood, or MDF, I guess that he used, is a little tougher. So it's got a, it's a little bit more sturdy. Another improvement that they made on this cocktail. If you bought a previous one, or even looked at our old video, we do automatically notice the quality difference. Alright, so we're just 
going to keep on going right around with that. Again, this is one of those instances where it does help having a friend or an extra person. We are coming on around with that just about as fast as I can go. And uh, let's get this part in there. Sometimes you can kind of get it in there to begin with by hand. And then as I knock it in, it comes on in. And I'm sure this is one of the only times she used this camera. Anyway, now one trick here, and you can do it either way. We're not that picky. What you can do is go over it and cut it long. In other words, I can go over these two and cut right here. That way they're the same and they match. Or I can just try to match these two. I'm going to go a little bit long. And I'll show you what I mean. As I cut down, of course you don't want to cut into the wood. I'm going to also cut this piece at that same kind of angle. That way when I get ready, I can take this out and then it should, uh, we'll have to get a flathead or something to pry that back open. But then I'll lay this down and as you'll see it'll look perfect. So look at all this T-molding that we had left over. I just zip tied it for easy storage. I want to thank them for including plenty of T-molding. So if you mess up, don't feel bad. There's plenty of extra and you can redo that part if you need to. So the step two is to go ahead and install the cam locks and the cam studs. And you're just going to refer to your manual. Every one of these pieces just about are going to have some places where these go. We've already put a couple in here. Uh, first thing I want to mention that there is a flat side of this, kind of a horseshoe or a U-shape. You're going to want to put that on the outside edge right here so that that, when we, hit, when we hammer that in, it's going to go right like that flat. So it's going to match that. And then wherever it tells you in the manuals where we're going to also, you screw these in with a screwdriver, those cam studs right there. So cam locks and cam studs, we're going to put them in all the pieces and we'll be back. All right, we're going on to step three. We've already installed all the cams and the cam screws uh, everywhere. And this one is easy as A, B, C. And we're gonna use the A panel, the B panel, and the C panel. Uh, there's th two sides. You're gonna make sure that you line up the one with three holes. You'll notice this one has more than three. It's gonna go towards me. The side with the three goes in. You're just gonna slide them into that screw and you're just going to turn it to the right. Remember, like the instructions said, to not over tighten. Just turn it to where it gets snug and you'll feel it kind of lock in. Okay, the next step is to put in panel D, which is the floor. Same thing, we're just going to put it in and then tighten these. Just a, not a full turn. About three quarters of a turn. I would say maybe a little more than half. And that's it. Not over tighten it. And that's starting to get real sturdy. Well, it's already starting to look like something. Uh, I, don't, I think only us gamers would think it looks like a cocktail at this point, but we're getting there. The next step is panel E, and it has these speaker holes like that. You're going to put it to the outside. You may have to tap that a little bit to get those cams to come in. And then as those come in, we're just going to tighten each one, like I said, a little bit more than a, maybe a half turn, not, not very much, and do not over tighten. So you can see I'm about a half a turn, just till it gets locked and snug, and then there it is. Okay, so step six is the O1 piece. It has a little bit of T-molding on the outside. You might notice that you're going to need to do it so that the, these cams are facing up just like the other side so that when you put the top down you can screw them in. But now that these are in, all we got to do is tighten these four and that will pull this in and pull that in. Okay, this next step I'm going to admit it's a little tricky. So you're going to need the M and the N panels. 
And what you're going to do is put the M in the end together like this. This will rotate. So you're going to have that one. If you can see how we did that and put, you tighten this and tighten there. And then you can rot you'll go ahead and put this M in like it goes. And as you sit this down, then we can lock in these four like this. Okay, now that we've got the M and the N panels, I should mention that was the first time I've had to use the stubby screwdriver, as you can see, because I don't have enough room. Now, if you delayed and didn't put on this E panel till now, uh, you could get that with a longer screwdriver, but the stubby works just fine. So the next step, step 10, is to put on the K panels, which are the skinniest, smallest pieces that we have, and they go on the side here and the side there and then you just lock them in, all four of those. And that gets step 10, it's really starting to come together now. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and put the top on. Uh, as you can see, it really starts looking like a good top cocktail when you do that. Um, we're gonna call this the front because this has where they have cut out if later on you wanted to install a coin door coin mechanism you can buy from them. It's already pre-cut so you could finish that and install that later if you wanted to. And we're going to call this the back where the speakers are. Remember where we started our T-molding you might not can see because we did a really good job of cutting that when I overlapped it I told you it would make a really good cut right there and it did. But we're going to put that on the back side just for my purposes. Just that probably be the side that might end up against the wall. Then all we got to do is go in here and tighten all these cams to lock down the top. So steps 12, 13, and 14 were pretty easy. We just went ahead and put this control panel together. One thing that it says, and you should follow, is that you put H, which is the top where the buttons are, and the sides first, and then J, and then I. One tip that we're gonna mention right here for the last build, uh, the last piece that you put is this I. It's good to go ahead and put it on the bottom and tighten these two and that way you can swivel it up and then all you have to do is you'll need the stubby this time is to tighten those from the top. Okay, now we're just going to install it to the cabinet which is pretty simple. You just push this on to the cams that are on here the, and we would mention that, you remember that horseshoe shape? It needs to be flat with the outside. If it's turned just a little bit, your cam may not line up. We had one that was giving us a little issue. We kind of had to readjust it. But now it goes right on. And then all we got to do is come in here and tighten up these cams. Okay, basically the last step in just installing the cabinet is to put the O2 panel right here on the outside and of course you just line it up you know you got the right side when the T molded and that has screws we don't want to put this in yet though because we're going to do some wiring and stuff so I would leave this off right now until you get the rest of your wiring all your buttons and everything hooked up in your monitor this is probably one of our last steps okay so that pretty much completed the assembly of the cabinet now we're going to start wiring up the electronics we did take the control panels off and we set them aside because it's going to be easier for us to do the joysticks and everything with them out here on the table rather than inside the game. So we did want to show you that we did take them off to do that. Now the first thing that we have to do is hook up our uh, wires here to the outside on off switch which is nice it was con uh, included. Uh, brown being our line um, Blue are neutral, and then of course the green and the, with the yellow stripe is our ground. So you just hook them up according to the diagram right there. Then we're going to have to run the wires through this hole. This wire right here, uh, you'll see, looks like a plug. That's going to go to our monitor, which is real nice if this is all done for you. And these other wires are going to go to our power supply. So we're just going to run those into the cabinet, and then I prefer 
You could do this upside down like that if you wanted, but I prefer that the switch be there and the outside power plug be there. So that's just going to set like that. That's how you turn it off and on. And then our outside plug going to the wall will go there. So I'm just going to drill. There's a little pilot holes there. So I'm going to put two screws. Now all the screws that came in the bag, two of them were gold. They're a little different and that's the two that I'm going to put in to that outside power plug. Okay, remember at Arcade Repair Tips, we always start at power, ASAP. We do that, so we started with uh, going down from the plug down to there, then this came up to the power supply, and you might remember that line was our brown, neutral was our blue, and then the red, I mean the green and yellow striped one went to the ground. We also went ahead and hooked up the power wires to the JAMA harness that was included in our kit. Now the great thing about it is that these are labeled and so red was our 5 volts, uh, black was our ground, this time green was the negative 5 and yellow was the 12 volts. So we went ahead and hooked that up. Now we don't have the board or anything else hooked up. What we want to do is test and make sure the power supply is set properly because you don't want to get this in there and it already be too high or too low the first time that you hooked everything up. So now would be a great time to go ahead and test it with our meter. We're going to turn it on. You should see the light come on the power supply. You see the green light there. And what we're going to look for is our voltage on our 5 and our 12 and right there. We're at 5.17 and on our 12 we are at 12.21, so we're a little high, so I'm going to back that off just a little, and let's see what difference that made. 5.3 actually went the other opposite way. We're going to turn it back down. You don't have to move it much. And now we're at 5.1 again. I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. 4.95, see I'm barely moving this, guys. A lot of times you'll see us do this 5.0 there and 11.84 there. That we're right at the 5 is what we want to get dialed in as close as we can. Now we may check this again later once we hook the board and put it under a load. Remember this is not under a load but it is a good time to test and make sure everything's working before we actually mount it in the game. Okay, we went ahead and mounted the power supply and the um, JAMA board, but what we did was it made it easy because there were some pre-drilled pre holes, so we just used those holes. You don't exactly have to put these there, but one good thing we like about it, stuff is right here where we could tweak it and work on it on this back door like that. It's kind of how we like to do it. But you're more than welcome to mount these in a different place. We just kind of feel like that's what that shelf was for, and it made it real convenient to do it that way. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and mount and wire up our volume and our test and our service button. We chose to do the volume first because we want to make sure that it's working everything before we mount the speaker up in there. And it's also easier to hook up with it outside before it's all up inside the game. So there'll be two wires coming from your JAMA harness, uh, a plus and a minus that go to your speak to normally go straight to your speaker, but they included a potentiometer, so it's going to go to the two outside prongs of that potentiometer first. Okay, now that you've got those hooked up, the other two wires that are coming from that potentiometer just hook up straight here to your speaker. And then you'll notice that as I turn it up, we got our board hooked up. You'll start hearing sound. So it's nice having the potentiometer because sometimes these boards can be really loud. Okay, now we mounted up the test and the service switches. They're outside the cabinet just so you guys can get a better view. Uh, you can follow your jammer wiring harness, which on the hollow one it's labeled, but pins 14, uh, one is test and one is service, and it, on, on theirs it's so easy because they make the black wire where it jumpers over here. You'll make one of them go the orange wire to one and the red to the other. That'll be your test 
and your service switches, which you'll need to get into to change your settings. Okay, so we finished installing the test buttons and everything. And what we've done now is we've just kind of separated our wiring. We chose this side, which is closest to the power supply, to be our player one side. And it's the one that's going to have the ground wires that you're going to daisy chain and jumper over to the player two side. So there's a bundle right there, all your player one wires. And if you come around here, we ran out the player two wires. As you can see, they have no grounds, but that jumper will come over here. So we just kind of separated our wiring. There's also some extra wires that we don't use in, uh, for this, but they're included in the Gemma Harness. For right now, we just kind of tucked them in the bottom of the game. We may end up cutting those later just to pretty it up a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do now is physically mount the controls in here. Then we can hook up the wires to them. And I always start with the joysticks. And the way that you do the joystick is this red ball unscrews from the top. You remove this piece. And that allows you to set the joystick down inside of here like that. Now we're going to put some screws in here. We All we did was loosen this so that this piece will swivel for us. We can actually swivel it the other way also, but that gives us a little room to put the screws in. Then on this side, all you gotta do is put that on and put the red ball on like that. Just screws on, and that's why after we get it screwed down, it'll play. We'll put all the buttons in. We'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Okay, one of the best improvements we're gonna show you right now. Now, we went ahead and took that top piece off because it's just a lot easier to install these buttons and stuff with it off. And all you have to do is just turn the cams back the other way, the opposite direction, counterclockwise, and they come right out. But I don't know if you can see this, but right up in here, there are some screw uh, pre-drilled holes. So what we did was we went ahead and put this one in there, it was real easy. The holes were pre-drilled, screwed it right in. But here's what I want to show you. If you guys remember seeing our last video, we really had to be careful to get this right in the middle. And if you use the pre-drilled holes, look at that. It's already right there in the middle for you. So all you have to do is put this cover back on here and then screw your red ball on and then your joystick is good to go. Now all we got to do is uh, mount the buttons and then we'll hook up the wires and then attach it back to the control panel. I mean to the game. Hmm. Okay, a couple tips before we go any further after we've mounted all this in there. First thing I want to show you is we purposely mounted the buttons so the prongs are sticking this way. That'll be easy to hook the wires to. If you had them going the opposite direction, they'll be really hard. You're still gonna have a little bit of trouble with this one, but you can bend it just a little bit. Just one on the joystick's gonna be a little bit hard. The rest of them will be easy. But here's something we need you to note. The joysticks will come eight way. Now, most of your games on a lot of boards that you may have, you may want it four way. If you want an eight way, you got a lot of fighting games, that's fine, leave it alone. If you want games that play kind of like um, a four way game, uh, that are some of those that are real popular, then you're gonna need to loosen these screws, let this drop or, and then move it. So the way that it, you kind of turn it like that, and the way that you'll know it's in four way mode, this will have a diamond shape to it. So it only hits four ways, not eight ways. And so anyway, now that that's got the diamond shape, we can just screw these back down. We'll tighten those. And then we're gonna go ahead and put all of our wiring together everywhere that it goes. Now we like this button layout. You can see this is player two. We like to go red, blue, and yellow. You don't necessarily have to go in that order, but this is our A button, usually red, fire, and then B, jump, stuff like that. And then the, this one, we don't use that much anyway. So that's just the way we typically like to do it, but you can wire these up any which way you want and also put those in any um, order that you want to. It doesn't have to be like this, but for our sakes and the way we like to build games, this is the way we do it. So I'm gonna start with the player one side. You can see, because it has the number one button over there. It's also the one, remember, that we said was closest to the power supply. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the first ground 
right to the start button and that's going to go if you look at these switches it's going to go to the one that's not like the others the other t other two are right there this is your grounds all those on top and on this it'll be the same way it'll look like that so we're just going to go from one to the other and hook up these in a daisy chain fashion so we're just going to go around and then the extra wires are going to go over there to the player two side we'll show that in just a few minutes i'm going to make sure that we're going in order we don't want to skip one because we don't want to waste any space and that one i turned upside down the other way it really doesn't matter i prefer normally to do them like this but i'll just show you that it's really not going to matter and then we'll do this one that's closest here You just want to make sure that you get those on there good and snug and that they're tight. Sometimes we'll use a pair of needle nose to push them on there. And if these are loose, you can kind of squeeze them together to pinch them a little tighter. But these are fitting in really good, so that shouldn't be any problem. I'm just going to keep going around with these grounds. And then, like I said, we'll run the other extras over here. We'll run across to that side. Now that we've hooked up the ground wires in daisy chain fashion, we want to hook up each individual wire to all the joystick up, down, left, right, and the buttons over here. The way you're going to do that is you're going to follow your, day, follow your jamma harness over there where it's labeled, and it'll follow that wire around. Now, say you're doing player one up. Uh, you want to make sure that you actually hit, put your joystick in the up position and see which switch is actually hitting. On this case, it's actually the one down here. So it's kind of in reverse. Just make sure that you're testing that. If you have a problem later, you can switch those around. It'll just go the opposite direction than you want it to. But you want to make sure that you hook those up. Now on the joystick part, it's real easy because there's only one other place to hook it up to. On the button, there's actually two other places. You want to hook it up to the one closest to your ground. So the, there's three switches. You want to hook the ground being the top one. The next one there, those are the two that you want to hook up. Okay, you may notice that your daisy chain wire may not, it'll barely reach over here to the second side and you may not be able to hook it up to each position if uh, with all those that are in the middle. Plus those in the middle could touch something. So the way that we remedied that was we had an extra wire, ground wire that wasn't going anywhere off the jamma harness. We took that wire and we took a butt splice and we just ran a solid wire across here. We butt splice it on this end, we butt splice it on this end. And now we're gonna run it through here. And now we have plenty of room and plenty of chains left in our daisy chain to hook up all the ground wires. Okay, now we got everything wired up and all we did was just kind of bundle up some of the wires just to get them out of the way. And now all we got left is to hook up the monitor. So that's gonna be our next thing is to install and hook up the monitor. And then we can actually turn it on and watch it play and make sure that everything's working. Okay, now we're going to quickly hook up the monitor. It's real simple. You've got a computer-like plug coming down from your power supply. And we're going to plug that into the brick right here. You want to make sure that you put that in real tight, real good connection. Then the other end goes to the 12-volt DC part right here. So it just plugs in kind of like a headphone jack. Then you've got the VGA coming off of your board. You're going to plug that in up here and it's got these screw down terminals right here. Just make sure that you push that on good and that you screw it in good and tight. Okay, the first thing that we did was we hooked up the monitor. Before we screwed it down, we wanted to make sure the screen orientation was the right way. It was the wrong way, by the way, so all we did was flip the screen around. Now we kind of brushed and cleaned it off, and we put four screws to hold it in just so it doesn't go anywhere. Now all we got to do is put in this black bezel, like such, and now we'll just put on uh, the top and the game will pretty much be done as soon as we put the cover on. So anyway, we got a working playing game right now. 
Okay, so the kit came with a piece of plexi, and one thing that we're really excited about is it came with the clips this time that hold the plexi on. Also, if you can get a close-up, Johnson, I will show you guys. You have these little black rubber pieces that just fit in these holds, and they kind of provide a little buffer or protection from the screen. You can see where I've moved um, some of those. Anyway, so that you put those down, then you put your glass down, and then you're going to put the clips on like this with the rubber pieces, and then you're going to screw from underneath. And that will finish this. But what we want to show too is we also have a piece of glass that you can upgrade to. We'll put that on there and kind of show you the difference. But we think the glass is a really uh, good option if you want to upgrade and go to it. Okay, the game is finished, but now let's talk about upgrades. As you can see, this is the Plexi that comes with it. Now let's look at this cabinet with the upgrades. The first upgrade we're going to talk about is the glass top instead of, now there's nothing wrong with the Plexi top that comes with it, but this smoke piece of glass really makes this game pop and look so much better with it. You may also notice that it has a riser. This allows you to play while actually standing up in cocktail version. But if you prefer to sit down, there are a couple of options for this rolling chair, which is adjustable, that you can adjust height and to whatever height you want it to when you're playing without the riser. It comes in red, and then there's also a black one here. But here's also a stool. Now, it doesn't go up high enough with the risers, but it's good for just a stationary stool that doesn't roll around. So again, you got the rolling stool that adjusts that uh, on both sides we got red and black, and then we do have this one that's just stationary, but it does actually go up and down some. So when the game is off the riser, this is perfect or even with the riser, you can use this stool on high, so it sets up a little higher like this. But anyway, isn't this a great looking game for the money? You just about can't beat it. Well guys, that's it. We're finished. We built a complete game from those boxes earlier to this finished product in just a few hours in an afternoon. And so, on your Saturday or some time off, you could easily do this project. It does help to have a helper a few times when uh, Jonathan was helping me, you saw in the video and stuff. So, you may want to have two people just to make the time go by a little faster, although you can do this on your own. Now, there are a couple things that we want to talk about that they upgraded in this version versus the last videos that we shot and was an older version. So this is a 2021 version. It has a little bit stronger MDF, and you can tell it. We were pretty rough a few times with it, and it held up really good and strong. Um, the next thing is that we had we found a lot of pre-marked drill holes, like especially where we put the uh, tabletop on, you know, where it's screwed in here, or where it's screwed in the power supply. All those had pre-drilled holes. The speaker had pre-drilled holes. That saved us a lot of time and made it a lot easier to do. Uh, there's also, you might remember in part of the video, there's a pre-mark for the coin door, which would be over here if you decided to go that option. I know a lot of you guys want to have that coin up experience, have your game coin up, so you would add that coin door. Well, it's already pre-cut, so you could just finish that out and pop their coin door that Holland Computer sells right in there. Um, the team molding this time is the exact size. It doesn't hang over and it was, remember on the corners, it was a lot easier to get in without having to cut it or do anything. Uh, this time it came with cocktail clips and they're very sturdy and good universal type cocktail clips that would fit just about any cocktail cabinet, So, but they work great with this one. Um, there's a full line of replacement panels, so if just one part or something was to go bad, you could just get that part. Or if something was damaged in shipping, you could get just that part. So that's a big plus. 
Uh, then the options we can finally finish up with. Remember the riser for the taller players like me and Jonathan. I know sometimes getting way down to the ground. I actually do like the riser even with the stools. Then we have the stools, but I think the best option that we saw was the glass. We really want to highly recommend that you upgrade to the glass. It just looks and dresses it up so much better. It's a really smooth piece of glass, all automatically already smoked and everything. I think that makes a big difference. So we got a new design, uh, the cocktail stools that are now available. I think through all of all, we want to say that we really think they did a great job on improving the current cocktail. Now you can get this new kit, and I think it's a great deal. Well, we thank you for watching our video today. We hope that this has been informative, and we hope to see you again soon.